Hey, this is Sam Black with my third match in this uh, Dragons of Tarkir sealed. I'm 2-0, and I won the roll, and again I'm going to choose play because I wouldn't want to be on the draw against an aggressive deck with evasion. And I'm going to keep this hand because it has three lands and Whisper Wave. My splash color, but not my secondary color, but my secondary color is light, so I can potentially get away with not drawing it for a little while anyway. And then if I'm not drawing swamps, um, I'm likely to be drawing other spells I can cast. Hands like this are part of why I like to be on the play here. I think this hand is a lot better on the play, um, because it's in sealed. I feel like, you know, if one of these is my first play, I can still be all right on the play, but it's much riskier on the draw. That was good. I will block this attack as a free roll so it doesn't indicate that my opponent has anything. And I'm just going to play Whisperwood. Bathe and Dragonfire punishes me, but this thing wasn't going to draw a Bathe and Dragonfire anyway, and removal spells that kill either one of these uh, cost enough mana that I'll have gotten more value out of the Whisperwood by just playing it now. And if my opponent has to kill Whisperwood, then this thing can't attack this turn, and then I can just play other stuff, and I should still be fine. Got my Manifest, whereas like if I waited to play the Whisperwood, then my opponent might have instant speed removal up, so... I think it was pretty definitely correct to play Whisper with that turn. To the extent that pretty definitely is a real thing. Okay, so this is all good. Um, this thing can't block, so I'm just going to attack with Whisperwood. Um, yeah, that's what's going to happen. I'm just going to attack with Whisperwood, and then I'll play this if my opponent doesn't block, and play Butcher's Glee if my opponent does block with this. Um, I'll play this if my opponent blocks with this, obviously. Okay, so I get to play Butcher's Glee and Beastbreaker. Uh, that's great. And this will let me kill both of these. sure what the upside blocking with this goblin is. Any trick I have kills this and saves my guy. If it's a plus two plus two, I guess it stops me from trampling because I have to just put all the damage here so that he can't have the goblin die to kill my guy. So I guess that's what he's playing around. Plus two two and trample. But in this spot it cost him his goblin. But you might be thinking he can't win from this spot anyway. No, wait. This guy taps for two, so there's no reason to tap that land. Which could matter if I hit Iron Shaman and my opponent played Crocs of Fate. Plus just representing tricks. Okay, so... Um, without really thinking about it, I'm unlikely to be sideboarding here. Uh, Red-black is pretty attrition-y. I could see bringing in Mind Rot, but Mind Rot's not a very powerful card in Sealed. And I don't feel like I have cards that are particularly poorly positioned against Red-black. I think my deck in general is really well positioned against Red-black, in fact. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to submit. Everything's been going well, no reason to change gears. This hand is iffy. Three morphs. I would likely play this on turn two, just because I have things to do with three mana. Um, 
these are both splashes, so it's likely that I won't draw red, and those will just be hill giants. Actually, like, the only reason I'm thinking about this is I do like uh, two land, five spell with one card I'm guaranteed to be able to play, and two that I can play if I draw any land on the draw against, like, red, black. Um, I like that I'm pretty spell heavy in a traditional situation. Um, arguments for mulliganing, obviously, having only one color and not having any really great cards. Um, Irish Shaman's pretty good, but I don't have red. Um, I think this is a super close spot. Um, so I attempted to keep. Yeah, I think it's really hard for this hand to get run over by red black. I'm going to keep. My opponent did spend quite a while sideboarding, so it's possible that he switched out of red black, but. It's always most likely that that didn't happen. And there we see red black. Alright, well, rewarded with Whisperwood again if I ever get to five. I don't draw a land like that. This could go badly. I mean, I knew that when I kept. Well, at least I don't have to discard. This is a spot where it's defensible to double block. I get blown out by anything, but I have that oh, well. Or I just that's I was probably gonna get double block and get except getting blown out by anything, so that was the same as like a removal spell except I took four damage. Um right, I drew black, that's good. Now I have to decide which morph to play first. Don't think it matters a lot. Um I'm not going to block with it, so I guess I'll play Iron Shaman. If I draw exactly Mountain next turn, it's pretty sweet. So Butcher's Glee is going to help with the fact that I'm starting behind some life here. If I draw a land, Wandering Tomb Shell is actually a really good play on this board. Uh, okay. Okay. Not only did I draw land, I drew mountain. That was great. Um, kind of opens up a lot of options. I think the best one is just tomb shell. I think attacking is a free roll. My opponent blocks, I'm really happy to butcher his glee. Most likely my opponent doesn't block, and then I play Tomb Shell, and I wasn't blocking the Cobra either way, and Tomb Shell blocks Prowler. So I'm gonna attack. My opponent has seen Butcher's Glee, so block would be really weird. And now I wouldn't say my opponent knows I have Butcher's Glee, but I would say that my opponent can reasonably expect that I have Butcher's Glee. I mean, my opponent should be as close as possible to knowing that I have Butcher's Glee. Okay, let's feel medium about that happening. Okay, I feel good about this happening. feel bad about that happening. That kills me. I'm, I'm just dead. Alright, well it's good to know that 
my opponent has that stuff. Um, things that I can do about that theoretically include my draw it. And if I were to... So basically the concern right now is that my deck is a little slow in this matchup. Thinking about cutting Sulngar Butcher. Um, could see adding Mind Rot or Hooded Assassin. Hooded Assassin doesn't actually match up well against the creatures my opponent played last game, but does live through Rupture. It just isn't really bad in my deck. Um, I think I should cut the Butcher. I think that deck was aggressive enough that I just need to lower my curve. And I think the options to add are like Strider or Hooded Assassin or Mind Rot or Vial of Dragonfire. Um, I think Hooded Assassin is the best of those. I will go first and I will keep this hand. Might not be able to cast the bathe, but the rest of this is a reasonable six card hand. Plus I like having, you know, three sort of, I guess it's just three draws to being able to cast Bath and Dragonfire. I really don't wanna use Anak, I'd find a mountain. Since I have plenty of lands, it would just be to cast the bathe. If I drew Guy right now, I'd probably just play this as you do. I don't think this thing is super high value, but it was high value enough that my opponent was willing to use a douse on it, and this let me spend mana that wasn't going to get spent on anything else otherwise. And it might rot if I don't use it there. Oh. Possible that I should have bluffed here, but that's really bad for me if my opponent calls. And I still think I might be able to race this thing or just draw a red source. For what it's worth, if I drew guide now, I probably would find the red. Michelle to block so I can safely attack. Kill with them would suck. So, uh, Mountain or either Grim Contest or um, Reach of Shadows lets me kill the Thunderbreak. And then I have two other tap lands. Let me kill it the next turn. So it's a reasonable number of outs to getting it off the board. Plus, I guess 
Timur War Shaman if it flipped like Whisperwood if I wanted to trade. I guess Whisperwood flipping Timur War Shaman is the better way to do it. And then Timur War Shaman could fight this thing. That would be great. Oh, good. This thing to try to get my opponent to do something. Obviously, the worst thing that could happen would be using this and having my taking three and then having my opponent kill my guy in response. That would be atrocious. So I really can't go for it when my opponent has four cards in hand and six mana untapped. thinking that long my opponent has to have something but as long as a play gets made at some point I can do this is the only thing I can think of that destroys me here. I guess Butcher's Glee would be pretty bad. Another problem is this put, puts me in range of dying to Magmatic Chasm. It's not the best, but... Well, let's see. I don't think I win by sitting here knowing that my opponent has cards that just kill me. Three blockers to two attackers. I think I get in there. I don't flip this because I'd go down to two blockers and then be dead to a removal spell. doesn't have anything to break through here. Flipping this does turn on Formidable, um, which lets me start using this guy, which could potentially put me in a really good position. But being two life, this game is certainly tenuous. Since something like that just kills me. Yep, dead. Lost a match to Magmatic Chasm. Mag 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 